my dear brothers and sisters, in the address of Bangalore, for every parish, we are about to form the pastoral council, parish pastoral council. Now this parish pastoral council is made up of uh, representatives. We choose the representatives and they, on our behalf, discuss things about the parish, especially the pastoral issues of the parish. Therefore, now, to choose persons uh, to the Pastoral Council, and also to be a member of the Pastoral Council, we must know what exactly is Pastoral Council. What are we really aiming at through the Pastoral Council? And also, what are the members supposed to do there? Therefore, we shall try to understand a little more about the Parish Pastoral Council. Now the Parish Pastoral Council beginning was done by Pope Paul VI through his letter Christus Dominus. And in this letter, number 27, he says that Pastoral Councils were first recommended in Vatican II's decree on the Pastoral Office of Bishops. It will be the function of this Council to investigate and consider matters related to pastoral activity and to formulate practical conclusions concerning them. Now the responsibility of the Pastoral Council is explained by Pope Paul VI. He says that the Council is to investigate and consider matters related to pastoral activity. So they are supposed to reflect on different pastoral issues that are coming up in the parish. So consider them, meditate upon them, reflect on them and then uh, suggest practical conclusions. They are to suggest practical conclusions to these pastoral issues. Beginning of Pastoral Council in the diocese, when was it? In 1973, the Congregation for the Theology recommended Pastoral Councils at the parish level in a circular letter to the bishops of the world. So previous one was for the diocese, diocese and Pastoral Council. Now, 1973, the Congregation for the Clergy recommends the Pastoral Council for the parish. So the circular letter on Pastoral Councils number 12 says that there is nothing to prevent the institution within the diocese of councils of the same nature and function whether pedophile or regional. So nothing stops having councils at the parish level also. It means to say that at the parish level also we can have councils which reflect on the pastoral issues, pastoral activities and suggest practical solutions to the pastoral problems. Now, continuing with this, the Code of Canon Law, which was revised in the year 1983, it speaks of Das and Pastoral Council. The Canon Law 511 in the Canon Code of Canon Law says, in each diocese, to the extent that pastoral circumstances recommend it, a pastoral council is to be established whose responsibility is uh, to investigate under the authority of the bishop all the things uh, which pertain to pastoral works, uh, to form them and propose practical conclusions about them. See, threefold responsibility of the pastoral council is explained in the canon 511. What are they? It, it first says uh, they are to investigate under the authority of the bishop all things pertaining to pastoral works. So they have to find out what are the different pastoral works that are to be done in the parish. So they have to make a list of those activities that are to be carried out. So they have to first find out what are the pastoral problems that are there in the parish and after that find out what has to be done. So ponder them over, meaning to say that uh, go into the depth of understanding these uh, realities, these pastoral problems. Find out why these 
problems are there and what is the root cause of these problems. That's how you have to ponder them and thirdly to propose practical conclusions. So once you know the problems, then you reflect on the problems, then suggest solutions to carry out different pastoral activities in the parish, in the diocese. So can 511. Also can 536 says uh, through the pastoral councils, uh, the Christian faithful along with those who share in the pastoral care of the parish uh, in words of their office, uh, give their help in fostering pastoral activity. Now there are some uh, who share the pastoral care of the parish uh, by virtue of their office. So there are some appointed to carry out pastoral activities in the parish. The parish priest, the assistant parish priest, the rector, they are appointed to carry out pastoral activity in the parish. Now, pastoral council is a body which helps these or those who are appointed for those responsibilities to carry out their responsibility in a better way. So that is what Can 536 says. So, what we mean by pastoral council? We understood what are the responsibilities. So, what is pastoral council? The definition for pastoral council is given. It says uh, a pastoral council. A pastoral council is a consultative body in diocese and parishes of the Roman Catholic Church that serves to advise the parish priest or bishop about pastoral issues. Now see, pastoral council is a consultative body in the diocese or in the parish. So this body is to help the parish priest to know the situation of the parish better. The parish priest consults the pastoral council to understand what is the reality of the parish. So it is a consultative body from which the parish priest will get the different ideas uh, in, the parish, in the Roman Catholic Church uh, and that serves to advise the parish priest or bishop about pastoral issues. So the pastoral council advises the bishop or the parish priest, uh, bishop at the pastoral level and parish priest at the parish level to carry out pastoral activities in a better way. So therefore, pastor invites a representative group of parishioners to study, reflect upon, and draw conclusions about some aspect of the past parish reality. So this, uh, the Gan 511 explains this. It says, investigate matters, ponder over them, and propose practical conclusions. So pastor council is uh, a body that can parish priest. Now you see, there is pastor and the pastoral council. So there is parish priest as pastor and there are councillors. Those who are members of the pastoral council. So what is, what is the relationship between the two? Is it the pastor consults sir, not because he wants to surrender responsibility for the parish but because he wants to exercise it wisely. Now see, this has been clearly understood. The pastor consults this body not to escape from his responsibility. He is serious about his responsibility and in order to carry out his responsibility in a better way, he consults the body to help him to give a clear, under give a clear understanding about the parish, about the pastoral uh, needs of the parish and so that he is able to carry out his responsibility in a better way. So good counsellors therefore are studious, discerning and able to compromise. They should be studious, meaning to say that they can really understand the situation. They are really knowing the situation, studious. Secondly, they are discerning in this situation what has to be done. They are able to give ideas, opinions, such persons and also able to compromise. They should be the ones who are ready to sacrifice their time, their energy, their uh, means, resources, whatever they have. So therefore, they should be also ready to sacrifice whatever they have and 
such people can be good counselors. Now, who is a pastor? We, we, we are calling it pastoral council. Council of the pastors. Pastoral means of the pastors. So, council of the pastor. So, who is a pastor? Only when we understand who is a pastor, then we understand pastoral council. So, then, who is a pastor? The, the original meaning of the word pastor or shepherd is one who tends the sheep. The one who is taking care of the sheep is called pastor or shepherd. So therefore this shepherd, let us try to understand what is he doing. There are four types of responsibility he is carrying out. One, one who knows his sheep. He knows his sheep by name. He names them, each of the sheep, he names them and he knows them by name. And also when he calls them out by name, there is one. Therefore, he knows of his sheep, names and calls them by name. Secondly, he feeds them. The shepherd feeds them. He is the one who is looking for fresh water and green pasture. It is not the sheep that is going in search of green pasture or fresh water. The shepherd looks for green pasture, looks for fresh water for the sheep. So he feeds them. Thirdly, he cares for them. He takes care of the sheep. So he some, somehow lives for the sheep. So what the, the sheep needs, he is ready to forego himself and give to the sheep. So therefore, goes after the lost sheep, loves them and gives medicine when sick. Also, shepherd protects them. At the risk of his life, saves when the wolves attack. So shepherd is the one who is in between the attacker and the sheep. So therefore, he lays down his life. At the risk of his life, he is saving or protecting his sheep. So these are the four qualities of our shepherd. One who knows the sheep, one who feeds them, one who cares for them, one who protects them. Now in the church, who is a pastor? Pastor in the church is the one who has spiritual charge over a person or a group. One who has spiritual charge, spiritual responsibility over a group, over a group, or also over a person. It could be over a group or over a person. See, over a group may be parish priest, the board head, or the bishop, the pope. See, over a group. But it could be over a person also, over a person because you may have, you may be God parents. When you go, when you are Godfather, Godmother, you are taking care. You are put on the spiritual charge over one person, your uh, God child. So therefore, you have spiritual charge over one person. So therefore, it could be over a group or, or, or over a person. Such persons uh, are called the pastors. So bishops uh, in the church primarily are called pastors. Others uh, share. The responsibility of a bishop, priests, religious brothers, sisters, what had the board representatives in a way every one of us. Every one of us is a pastor. Every one of us is a pastor. It's not only the bishop, not only the leaders, every one is a pastor because all of us have a mandate to love our neighbor. Jesus says, love your neighbor. So if we have to be disciples of Jesus, we have to love our neighbor. Neighbor for Jesus is the one who is, who is in need. The one who is in need, we have to love, meaning to say that we have to help the person who is in need. And when we have to love the person who is in need, we have to help the person, automatically we become the pastor of that person. So every one of us has this responsibility. So therefore every one of us is a pastor. We have spiritual charge over others. That which is pertaining to the pastor is called the pastoral. Pastor we understood. The pastoral word pastor means of the pastor. What is of the pastor? That which is pertaining to the pastor which is spiritual responsibility. Communicating faith, educating on values, helping in temporal needs, working to establish peace and harmony, 
inspiring the community to work in one mind and heart. This is uh, the responsibility of a pastor. And the pastor, therefore, is a leader. He has responsibility over others automatically means to say that he has to take the others along the path of spirituality. Pastorally, the persons have to be helped. So therefore, pastor is automatically a leader. A leader is a pastor. So, who is a leader? Leader, often we have this definition, one who knows the way, walks the way, leads the way. Leader. Leader means the first one who knows the way. He knows how to do it. The way. How to do it. He knows. Then second, the, the way in which he knows it, he also does it. Whatever he knows, he carries out first. So he walks the way. And thirdly, after knowing the way, walking the way, he leads others to walk the way. He helps others also to carry out what he is doing, whatever that is good. So such person is a leader. Someone who guides other people, someone or something that is ahead of others in the race or competition. You can see the picture there. How the, the leader is walk first knowing the way, he knows the way. He knows that at the other side we can reach by doing this. And then he walks first. He walks first. And thirdly, he leads the others. You see that others are following. So he is the leader. So we have to be leaders in the church, helping others to walk the way. Now what are the different qualities that the pastor or leader should have? I will quickly run through some of the qualities of a leader. Leadership is not by birth, but learned. Every one of us can be a leader. Don't ever think that by birth we get leadership. If we were not the leaders by birth, we cannot be leaders. No. Everyone can become a leader. Leadership is not by birth. It has to be learned. Because leadership is a skill. Skill has to be perfected. It has to be learned. So therefore, we can be leaders. We can become leaders. Leader is selfless. One who gives. One who gives only can become a leader. One who always receives cannot be a leader. Nobody follows a person who always wants to grab things from others. Instead, if the person is selfless, generous, if he or she is able to give, then others will follow the person. So therefore, leader is selfless, one who gives. Leader is the one who allows participation. Not only he does it, he allows others also to participate. So all together, collectively, they can achieve. That is the attitude of the leader. A leader must believe that I can do something, but I cannot do, cannot do everything. So I need the help of others. So all of us put together, our energy we put together, and through that we can achieve higher. So therefore, leader believes that in participation only, we can achieve higher. Leader, therefore, is of the group, outside the group, and not about the group. You see the qualities of leader, the position of the leader. Leader is positioned of the group. Leader also is part of the group. He is also a member. She is also a member of the group. Secondly, outside the group, when all the others sit there, the leader sits on the other side. Therefore, outside the group. Leader has to be placing himself or herself sometimes outside. Meaning to say that the leader cannot think like all the others. Think differently also. But not about the group. Because he or she thinks differently. And on the other side, he or she cannot say that I am above others. He or she cannot dominate. The person has to allow to participate in uh, kind of uh, uh, participation where everyone contributes. Leader, another quality is optimistic. Leader believes that it is possible when everyone else says that it is not 
not possible. The optimism is that. Leader says, why can't we? When everyone else says this is not possible, we cannot do it. The leader says we can. So that, that is the kind of person can become a leader. So leader is optimistic. He is, or she is a dreamer. Plans, sets, vision, goals, objectives. Self-motivated. Life giver. Leader is bubbling with energy. Self-motivated. He or she doesn't need others to coax them, others to enthuse them. The leader is bubbling with energy and he has life and he is the life giver. He gives life to those who seem to be not having life. So he encourages others, enthuses others so that they are able to achieve. So self-motivated. Leader is enthusiastic, ready to achieve. Leader and group are complementary. See, leader and group are complementary. Leader gives something, group also gives something. Both contribute, then only they are able to achieve. So leader and the group are complementary. There is no leader if there is no group. There is no group if there is no leader. So both need each other. They are complementary. One completes the other. See, there is no shepherd without the sheep. Without the sheep, we cannot call this man shepherd. When this man has a sheep, then he is shepherd. Similarly, we cannot call someone now as leader when he doesn't have a group. So leader and group, they complement each other and they require one with the other, one for other. One who has communication skills, leader also must have communication skills. So put together, leader can be described as a staircase to climb. Leader is a staircase to climb and not a wall that blocks. Leader is a one, he is a light staircase. staircase. He or she must help others to climb. Staircase is not climbing. Staircase is placed there and stamping on the staircase, others are climbing. So therefore, leader should be the one who is helping others to come up in life. So he, should, he or she should be staircase, but not a wall that blocks. Leader should not be like a wall that blocks. See, you see, when there is a wall, up to the wall we can walk, but beyond the wall we cannot go. Wall, wall blocks. The leader should not be like the wall which uh, uh, blocks uh, the growth of others. Leader should be staircase which allows others. Similarly, leader should be dynamo, not dynamite. See, dynamo and dynamite. Sound similar, isn't it? More or less. Dynamo and dynamite. But you see the meaning. Leader should be dynamo, generator. He should produce our energy. He, he should produce energy in the group, but he should not be dynamite. Dynamite is the one which destroys. Leader should not be the one who is destroying the group. Instead, he or she should be the one who is building the group. This person will help build the community, joints, communal harmony groups. So, in the church, leader and pastor, how they should look like. What are the qualities? I will give you one or two representation to serve the people of God in love. So when you are representative in the pastoral council of the people, you are given this responsibility to serve the people of God in love. To serve the people, not to get benefit from the people. You are there to serve. For service, you are given this responsibility. So when you become the member of the pastoral council, your attitude should be of that of service. You have to help the people, not look for benefits for you. Secondly, everyone has a mission. Everyone, I said, is a missionary. So to carry out my mission as a missionary, this responsibility 
they have in a special way. But I become the representative of the people. I'm able to serve them and service is my mission. And the man that given to me is to love my neighbors. And as leader, I'm able to love my neighbors in a better way. So in order to fulfill my mission, this helps. The kind of leadership that is uh, required of a member, council member, also the prince and others is uh, servant leadership, not uh, domineering leadership, servant leadership. Meaning to say that we should be servants of others. With this attitude, we have to accept this responsibility. The leadership in the church is of a servant. We should be last and all the others should be first. We should be the last ones. It's the attitude that is shown by Jesus when he washed the feet of his disciples. So he says that the last would become the first in the kingdom of God. So therefore, when we Christians, we have to look for last and the least place. This is an opportunity to become the last and the least. When we become the members of the pastoral council, we can practice uh, to be the servants of the people and become last and help others to come first to grow to become first. For this, uh, there is need for commitment. Commit totally for the church. Commit our lives for the church. Commitment will give us uh, this attitude of service. Therefore, whatever we have, we commit for God and we are ready to serve the people of God. To this, during uh, this holy Eucharist, we should ask the Lord to enlighten us to choose the right persons and also let us pray to the Lord that uh, we may have uh, representatives, pastors, leaders uh, who are in the model of Christ uh, to become the last and the least uh, and show their servant leadership.